Hey yo guys, what's up? It's Omega, back with another video, or whatever you want to call it. If you guys are new to the channel, or you have been around for a while, please do, uh, you know, decide, like, and subscribe. You know, it helps me out as a content creator and stuff, and uh, stay tuned to stuff in the future. So yeah, you know, really only today, what I'm going to be talking about is why Rust Console Edition can never be what PC truly is. And this is going to include some stuff like what the fans think, you know, the community, why the test branch servers are what they are, and things like that. So, say what you agree and what you disagree with in the comments below. Give me some future ideas for the next video, something like that. If you guys do like videos like these, I might try doing another one like that then. You know, only for a certain amount of updates or whatever, you know, anything that's really important. So yeah, stay tuned and enjoy. Alright, first off, we're going to start off with the testing branch and how it's only available for Deluxe and Ultimate Edition players. Now, if you know me, that's fine. I don't really care about that. What I'm saying is other games like PUBG and most other games also have a public testing branch for the community. They would make it available for anyone that just bought the game. So I think people that didn't buy Deluxe or Ultimate Edition, you know, obviously they only have the Normal Edition game, which is just fine. But... To be honest, you're not really missing out on anything in the testing branch, because there's not really much to begin with. All the maps are with, are the same, you know, at least what I've experienced from. There's a lot more bugs. They don't really add anything new besides bigger maps and tech tree. It's not really fun. You can't use your own skins in it. Kind of annoying. Uh, you know, what I'm hoping they don't do, I'm hoping that they don't make it to where you can have another set of skins in that, but that also won't transfer over back to the main game. So that's, that's pretty annoying to me, to be honest. But anyway, the main point is you're not missing anything in the testing branch. There's nothing going on. Only bigger maps, jesters, and tech tree. For now, they're probably going to add more stuff in the future. And if that happens, I'll make an update video on that. But for now, nothing important. Let's talk about things like aim assist and the recoil change. For the aim assist, uh, it's already been released in testing branch, and let's say first impressions on it were not the best. I didn't really like it. It made it too hard to aim, and it really just messed with my settings a lot. Now, of course, you can change some of the stuff in settings to make it less, um, you know, kind of backfire on you. You can you can change some of the stuff like that, and it will help. But I think Amos is a very bad idea for the game. I don't like it. It adds no skill gap to the game, and it's basically just like Call of Duty if they add it. Same thing with the recoil change. As of right now, what we have in the main game about recoil change, I think that's completely fine. You know, honestly, it's not too bad. I even enjoy it. The older version, uh, it was pretty hard to control the guns when the game first came out. I'll admit, AK was pretty difficult, but that's where their skill comes from. If you can learn something like that, then you're basically going to be really good at the game. You know, that's the point of the skill gap, to keep it balanced and to keep it so if you want to get good, then you have to practice. That's the only way it can work. But if everybody's already good, then what's the point? There is no achievement to it. What I'm really trying to say is that if they add another recoil change and make it even easier, because I think what they're doing is, I don't think they're making it easier, I think they're making it a little bit harder. So I think that's a good part. But if you add an aim assist, that's going to completely throw everything off the charts. It's going to make it super unfair for people to actually strive to get better when everybody's just using aim assist. Including like, you know, people like the little kids come from Fortnite, come from Call of Duty, you know. It's going to just make the game really annoying, I feel. Now, if you do have aim assist servers and non-aim assist servers, that's completely understandable. I think that's going to work out really well in the favor. Back on topic with the testing branch stuff, instead of them focusing on things like the recoil chains and, um, you know, gestures and stuff, I think what they should really be trying to do is add in oil rig, the new momentums, you know, things like that, you know, and also vehicles. Vehicles will make a great addition to the game. Horses even, just horses to start off with, and a huge maps. Bigger play accounts. That would make the game a lot more funner and bring a lot more people in. If you add in bigger play account servers and fewer servers, then you'll always have some sort of full servers. Because right now, there's way too many servers. I don't know how many there are. Maybe like a thousand or something like that. Probably not. But there's too many servers right now in the main game and in testing branch. 
well, last time I went in the testing match, it was like maybe eight people on each server, maybe twenty at most, and it just like completely ruins the whole experience. What's the point of a big map but seeing no one at any time? There's no fights. It's dull as hell and just super boring. Too hard to get into. So if you get rid of a lot of the servers, maybe get rid of like at least 50, uh, depending on what region it is, then you'll have you'll see be seeing a lot more full servers. And you know if there's queue for servers, then that that's the good thing. That's a good thing. That means a lot of people want to play on the server. We have more interactions, more people trying to play, and a lot more you know purpose of playing because when you think about it monthly wipes just like one week of it there's probably a team that's already taken over the whole entire wipe and it basically have to wait till next wipe to even get a good start because that team just doesn't stop raiding people until it completely becomes dull and then they even quit the server and they just go into a new one so what's the point I think at this point we should talk about some of the skins and how that might work in terms of what D11 is thinking of. What I think they should do is they should make it to where you can trade skins, make it so we can, um, you know, get skins off PC and just put it onto PlayStation, Xbox, whatever. Stuff like that would be really fun for the community, you know? We still have gambling websites, you know, maybe you could transfer that to there. If they find out something to do with Face Punch, because Face Punch still owns Rust, they still own the game. They can still change stuff. Like it wouldn't be too late to fix the game. So I think if they did something like that, it'd be really fun. And I like how they're doing the two-week change for the skins. You know, giving people time to choose whether or not they want the skins. But I think uh, a weekly change would be a lot better instead of a two-weekly change, because then that's basically more than half the wipe. You're stuck with skin. You stay. You're stuck with the same skin. Now, I don't know what Face Punch does, but I think they either do the same thing or they do it sooner. Now, obviously, by the time I'm recording this, Halloween update is getting close. So I think we'll be seeing some Halloween skins uh, by the end of Thursday. So, you know, what I'm hoping for is the Halloween Hammer skin. That's a very useful skin, and a lot of people use the hammer on a daily basis for their base. So, you know, it will be a really good skin to have because it's so um, useful and such a coincidence. So yeah. Now for things like the keyboard and mouse, you know, M and K users, obviously you have the Zim, you have the Chronos, people that use that scum. If it's not allowed in the game, you shouldn't be allowed to use it. Now, of course, if they added keyboard and mouse support, I feel like that would make the game a lot more PC like so we can just drag stuff out of your inventory, drag it across the screen, you know, making it a lot more PC feeling, if that makes sense. Because it just seems a lot more like Rust when you're on PC. Maybe it's because where it's originated from, or maybe it's because you're using your whole entire body to do something. Using your arms, using your fingers. Obviously, you know, use your fingers with the controller, but you get the point of what I'm trying to say. You know, if they had servers where keyboard and mouse was allowed, and they gave keyboard and mouse support for those servers, that'd make the game a lot more funner. Now, they might do something like that with community servers, and I'll get into community servers in just a moment, but if they did do something like that, I think that really adds something to the game. This is just all personal opinion, though. If you don't like keeping a mouse, that's fine. But if you like it, that's also fine. It's all personal opinion, people. Alright, now finally, I want to talk about community servers, because community servers are one of the biggest and anticipated soon enough, at least. Because even D11 said they were point now obviously people want the two times three times stuff like that they also want the free gun servers i know free guns was in like the beta and it was also in something else but free guns was one of the best parts about rust when the wipe got boring you could just go in there and relax for the rest of it practice your run, get back and you know that, that back it make the game a lot more funner and this way give you something to do before the wipe hits now, also back to community servers topic, they said that they don't want to pay people to be an admin on their servers, and that's fine, I understand that, they shouldn't have to pay players to play the game, but if they want more people to enjoy a game, they need to have community servers, they don't have to pay the players to, you know, add the game, 
they could have the mods on the disc that in a game or something like that in a certain region, a certain section, wherever it is, or they could have players I think that was six. buy their own server. So this way, they can be the admin of that server. And even those players can have their own moderators of that server. This way, they can have their own Discord section of their server. They could have, you know, their own That's custom good. thing on that server. Alright, who's going down there? Who's standing up top? They should be able to change settings on the servers, map size, vehicles, loot, anything like that. You know, this way, you don't have to pay them to be the admin because oh, they're like I'll go down to be an admin on their own server. Now, of course, this would be okay. And I guess me and yeah, me and Reggie are staying up like here then. A one time purchase or like a monthly purchase kind of thing, like a subscription. That's what that's what I'm looking for. A subscription of where they have to do a monthly pay to keep their server going, or you know, I guess they uh, D11 just takes it back. You know, obviously it's what D11 chooses. I think it'd be a lot better to just have a one time, pay, you know, maybe like twenty dollars for your own server. And then, you know, I guess D11, because they also said Man, that stuff level is insane. people's own servers would be too difficult, and it'd be like a third-party extension network thing, something like that. I don't know how that works. But they said it'd be too difficult, so it's really what they all decide in the future, but I think they just don't want to do it. You gotta remember, it's D11 we're talking about, and at the end of the day, it's their game, so, yeah. But, that's basically the end of the video. Um... You know, right now this is on the voiceover, so I haven't gotten to editing yet. But once I do, it's probably gonna look a whole lot better. So peace out, and I'll see you in the next video.